What's going on guys and welcome to Behind the Creator. First of all, I wanted to thank you guys for supporting me so much in this new venture that I've sought out, talking with incredible creators, with people that are experienced and talented in their craft, helping me be the person throwing the party as I get to talk about creativity and talk about what it's like to be in this social media world. I wanted to do a little video, not in podcast form, but just talking with you guys about what it's like being in the social media field and what the differences are today creating content versus 20 years ago when you were in the marketing world. Uh, one of the things that um, I want to make the center focus, this great quote that I heard by one of my favorite musicians, one of the people that I most admire in music and the reason that I picked up a guitar, his name is Billy Corrigan. Um, I'm gonna put the quote right here talking about the state of social media right now. And he said, in the past, music and content used to exist on a timeline. And and now it, it exists in a sphere, it exists in, in a circular fashion. Let me kind of break that down. Let, let's use the example of a musician. Whenever a musician would put out something creative, they would first put it out um, and there would be a set timeline for which they would map it out. So let's say they released a song, it would go on the radio. They would advertise for it, put it out on the radio, it would be out for an extended amount of time and then maybe it would hold or maybe it wouldn't. Then another song would be out or another album would come out and there would be only so much attention that the nation could hold because there was radio, there was TV, maybe there was MTV, maybe there wasn't. There was a, an allotted amount of time that you could experience that music for before something else came along and there was something new newer, something better, something more fresh. Now, the way we experience the internet, the way we experience content, and the way we have to train ourselves to create is for a circular internet. For example, everything is always existing forever. It's a meme culture that breaks down into um, things becoming incredibly nostalgic over and over again. That explains the fila generation coming back. That explains the dad shoes. That explains this super old style coming back where everybody's wearing dad clothes again. All of those things happening over and over again is because we're living in a constant state of nostalgia because everything is forever existing in a circular fashion. So the way that happens in music now is that people People don't release music and then have it out for an extended amount of airplay on the radio and then it goes away forever. Um, now kids that are being born today will experience Led Zeppelin, will experience the Beatles, will experience Jimi Hendrix at the same time that they're experiencing Travis Scott, that they're experiencing John Mayer, and that they're experiencing, um, you know, take your pick, Mac Miller. Uh, so we're living in this really funky world and us as content creators, us as people who are living in this social media world have to train ourselves to create for that. I think one of the best examples that I've thought of in favor of this has been the Google Assistant commercial that came out with Macaulay Culkin. It was phenomenal marketing, phenomenal advertising, but not just that. It captured something more than nostalgia. A lot of people think that that commercial went viral because it was nostalgic and because it came out during Christmas and it captured uh, people's memories. But I don't think that's why it happened. Um, I don't think that's why it did so well, or I don't think that's why it did uh, incredibly successful. I think the, the Google Macaulay Culkin commercial worked because it existed in a sphere on the internet, and it tapped into something eternal, which was Home Alone. And it gave people exactly what they wanted. So let me, let me uh, unpack that. Home Alone gets to break down all of the things that we love. It, um, warming our hearts to family, getting to love one another, you know, presents, all, all of these things that are really familiar to us and it creates this nostalgic feeling. And that exists for us in the form of memes, it exists for us in the form of movies, it exists for us in the form of holidays and Christmas and Jesus and family and all these things. All Google did was take the one center thing that people could never get up until this point, which was the actor, Macaulay Culkin, who up until this point didn't want to be in any work associated with that, and they put that missing puzzle piece in place. It created a perfect symmetry between um, the nostalgia of the old movie and the eternal effect of the internet, so where people 10 years from now can see that that same commercial and say, and still think it's fresh and still think it's new and still think that it's just as funny and clever. 
that's the idea of the internet. What we have to do as content creators is create for that. Not create for something new, not create for something fresh, not even create for something funny or cool or witty or sensational or trendy. We have to create for something circular, something evergreen. Keep that in mind when you're creating things. Keep that in mind when you're, when you're doing um, YouTube or when you're on LinkedIn, which most of you should be on LinkedIn by now. Um, Create for authenticity, but also create for something that's going to link to something eternal. Uh, and, and that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. I think that it's, I think that we're living in really awesome times right now, uh, where creativity can take any shape. I was watching uh, the American meme on Netflix. It was pretty much a documentary about the fat Jewish. It's crazy to see how somebody's curated list of memes can pretty much become an art form. And that's the world that we're living in. And I think there's an appreciation to that. I think there's a beauty to that. I think that that's something that should be cherished. Who knows what that's gonna look like? I don't think we should double down on it instantly. I just think that we need to start to think about the ramifications and we need to start thinking about how that's gonna play out from here to five years, here to 10 years. And we need to create for that. We're supposed to be the fortune tellers. We're supposed to be the people casting vision. Think about that because there's so many resources we can be using. We can be really meta like Andy Kaufman. And we can be really out of the box like Andy Warhol. It's just another paintbrush. It's just another paint color. It's just another canvas. I just wanted to get that out of my head because when I saw the Macaulay Culkin thing, I knew people were gonna be like, that's a great commercial. And I think it's so much more than that. I think it really speaks volumes to our society, about our society. Uh, so this has been Behind the Creator. Um, more episodes coming soon. It's gonna be season two. I know there was only five episodes of season one, but booking guests is really hard. So if you wanna be on the behind the creator and you want to talk creativity you want to talk about what you do let me know and I'd be glad to host you and uh, you know let's let's throw a party my name is Angel and this is behind the creator